welcome back to my next video. Today's video is part one of several parts that we'll be putting together for the installation of the water tank underneath our cargo trailer. If you haven't already done so, I really hope you'll take the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you'll know when our next YouTube video is coming out. With that being said, let's get started. So I used PlasticMart.com. Now I have no association whatsoever with Plastic Mart. Uh, I'm not an affiliate of theirs. Uh, they haven't provided me any products. Uh, they haven't given me anything whatsoever. As a matter of fact, this is the first time that I've ever used them. So, but they were a great little company to work with and their prices were outstanding and their product that they sent me was outstanding. So I thought it'd be helpful just to show people first off how I actually ordered this and then the support that they gave me trying to figure out like what size I needed and the type of fittings I needed and all of that stuff they were extremely helpful so uh, I just went to plasticmart.com I went to RV tanks I clicked on water tanks now I was looking for a specific one so I went down to nine gallons and I wanted one that was as thin as I could possibly, you know, uh, height-wise, actually, as small as I could possibly make it. So I went down here and I found this one here. It's nine gallons, RV water tank, 32 inches, that's the length of it, 15 inches, that's the width of it, five inches high. That was perfect for my purposes. So you'll notice that uh, it has three holes on the front end of it. So you've got this one here, so that's for the water inlet. This one here is going to be for your vent, and this one here is going to be for the outlet. That's where the water is going to come out of so that you can pump it into your faucet. Now, in my particular case, I wanted to have this one and this one, but this bottom one I actually wanted on the back side of this. So what they do is they end up sending you a PDF form to fill out. And this is what the PDF form actually looks like. So you can see here it's 15 inch width, 5 inch height, 32 inches in length. And you can decide boat or RV. So you just check RV. You can put in your name here. And keep in mind, I don't even have a PDF form filler or anything so I'm just gonna put in David Smith uh, I don't have a company phone my email my shipping address and then what you can do now again I think if you have uh, the PDF film f uh, filler type of thing you'd be able to take these now I wasn't able to do that so you can see this little circle here that's uh, that's dark and then you got this other one up, up here that isn't so you'll see where it says hidden fitting what hidden fitting really means is that if you're looking at the front of this tank if you were standing in front of it the hidden fitting you wouldn't be able to see so in my case what I wanted to do was take this hidden fitting and move it to the back side of this tank and after you do that they'll assign someone to you and call you up just to make sure that that is what you actually want to do. Now, in my particular case, since I didn't have the ability to move these things up to here or this black one, uh, you know, for a visible fitting to here type of thing, what I did was I took this and I drew it back here. And then I actually scanned it in on my scanner and then I uh, emailed it to them and they got right back to me and the guy was really good so he explained this whole thing to me so uh, once I did that you know it took them they said it was going to take about four weeks uh, it got to me in like two so uh, the shipping on it was really quick even though I was special ordering it now I'm going to go back and show you the reason that I wanted to have this particular tank is not only because of the height of it but also because I wanted to be able to have these two on one side so I installed my water inlet on one side of the trailer but I'm actually going to have my kitchen on the opposite side so I wanted this fitting 
for uh, the other side of the trailer. So again, all I did was use this form, oops, was use this form and take this uh, where it says hidden fitting, put it back here in the middle, and then I had my one here and my other one here. And I basically just uh, emailed them that. And like I said, they assigned somebody to me. The guy was great, uh, explained everything to me, and I got it within two weeks. So with that being said, uh, let's go back to the actual tank. This is a, a side view of the tank when I got it and how it was wrapped in the plastic. So it was really well wrapped. And this is an end view. So you can see those uh, cardboard little round things there. Those were uh, covering up the, uh, the ends where they had uh, installed the fixtures so that you can just screw in the, uh, the connections that you need. Uh, great job and no problems with the tank once it arrived. So what I did was I started out with the water tank. I got a three quarter inch piece of uh, plywood. This is that, uh, it's called white wood, I believe, that I got it at, uh, at Lowe's. You can buy it at Home Depot. I'm sure you can buy it probably at other hardware stores as, as well. Not promoting Lowe's by any means. Uh, what I did then is I took a piece of reflectance because what I want to do is at least to some degree is actually insulate uh, the tank. And I'm going to do it with just one piece of reflectix by rolling it over and then, you know, strapping it down so that it can be held in place. And then I just lined this up so that I knew, okay, that this board was even with this edge. And then that gave me some room on the other side. And I went around to the other sides and did the same thing. I put the board over here, put the reflectix on, and then just drew a line at the bottom of this board right here. And I went around the other side and I did the same thing. And what I'm going to do now that I've got the lines drawn is I'm going to go ahead and just cut the board. And that will allow me to put the reflectix around the edges of this. And then the wood, I'm actually going to use pegs and screws to actually hold the wood in place. And this wood will be just level with this. I was going to place a strap then to go over top of the water tank, but I decided that a much better option actually was to enclose the whole top end of the tank as, as well. And I haven't quite decided if I'm going to use a half inch piece of plywood or a three quarter inch piece of plywood. So I'm still kind of up in the air about that, but we'll kind of see as we go along. So I'm just at the point now where I'm going to go ahead and take the tank off the piece of wood, but you'll see over on the sides. Here, I've got my line drawn. Here's another line. And then here's the last one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it this way first, where this line is, and then I'll cut it down, and then that tank will fit in there. And I'll be able to put a three quarter inch piece of plywood along this whole edge, this back side, and in front, and on the other side. And then that is gonna allow me to put the reflectix on as well to kind of insulate it at least to some degree. I'm also going to have a heating pad on this side right here so that uh, while I'm at the beet harvest, if it gets cold, I can just plug it in and it should keep the water from freezing. So I'm going to install these one half uh, inch connectors that I have that are on the right, the smaller ones, because this one on the left uh, was too large that I purchased. It's an inch and a half rather than an inch and a quarter. So just using some uh, plumber's tape, I just put it around the threads of the half inch fittings. And then I went ahead and screwed them into the, uh, the vent at the top and the outlet on the back end. So once I had that in there, I just went ahead and screwed it. Okay, that's good. I'm going to move this tank so you can see it here. Take this 
tape off that I have. I just put this tape on here last night to kind of protect this as well. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this one and screw it in here. And the same thing with the wrench. So once I cut the board, I went ahead and just put the tank back down and uh, just kind of lined it back up again. And then what I did was I made sure that uh, all of the boards uh, would fit around it to include leaving myself room for the Reflectix. So then I took the tank out and then I just kind of squared up the boards to make sure that everything fit just as it was supposed to. And when I got done, I could tell it was perfectly square. Now what I end up with is a perfectly square box that'll fit the tank. So now what I'm going to do is I went to the local hardware store and I brought some pegs. These are 3 8 by 2 inches. Well 2 inches is actually too long but I wanted to make sure I had enough of them and these are the only ones they had which is fine because what I can do is on my little bandsaw now, I'm simply going to cut these in half. That means I'll have two that are each one inch in length. The plywood is three quarters of an inch, which means I can drill in a half an inch on both sides. So I'll drill in a half an inch from here and a half an inch down there. And I'll use these pegs along these bottom ends. So I don't have to use the pegs. But I'm going to because I want to make the box absolutely as sturdy as I possibly can. Okay, so I've gone ahead and, and marked these. Now, do you have to have a saw like I do? Uh, a little band saw like this to do this with? Absolutely not. I mean, you could easily just take a little saw and cut these off. It's not that big of a deal. A little hand saw, you know, it wouldn't take much to cut these at all. But I just happen to have a band saw here, so I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. I'll cut these in half. I'm going to do uh, the whole entire box so that I have plenty as I'm working on the rest of the box for the water tank. So I'm going to fire up my, uh, my generator, cut these real quick, and then we'll measure out the, uh, the pieces of wood that are on the, the platform for the water tank, and we'll start uh, making the holes for it. Okay, so what I did was, you'll see I labeled each one of these. This is four. I just went around the top side. So one two, three, and this is four. And then on the bottom of this, I marked this one four. I marked the other one one, two, and three. These other little boards sitting off to the side here. And then what I did was I just put this up so that it was even. And I marked actually this board, <coughs> the larger one. And I said, okay, you know, I want to evenly space my dowels in between here. So I came an inch and a quarter from this side and an inch and a quarter from this side. And then I measured six inches in between each one of these. And that should be fairly equal. And what I'll do is I'm going to put a screw here, 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 and at the end over here. So there'll be one at the very beginning, one at the very end, and the one is in between each one of the dowels. That way I give it a super amount of support. So this is the little jig that I use <clears throat> when, uh, when doing the dowels. And what I've done is I've set the drill for a half an inch. To do that, all you do is undo this little deal here. It's got a little screw. And put it in here. Put it inside the jig. And inside let's turn this so inside i take a tape measure and i just measure a half an inch up so this is just a titch over a half it's just about perfect actually so once i got that down what i did was i had the marks on the board here right and what i did was i came up on top here and marked them as well so you can see these little marks coming across. So now I'm going to put it here. And using this, 
I'm just going to look through here. I'm going to find the center. You can see. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to bring back that larger piece, drill those, see how these fit. Alright, so I just took the dowels <coughs> and pushed them in there is all I did. And this is that top piece. What's nice is this is curved just a little bit, not much, but just enough to where you gotta like hammer this in. So we're gonna go ahead and hammer this piece in here. Once you get this started, it makes it a little easier. Perfect. Okay, so as you can see, that came out really super straight, even though this uh, board was a little bit warped. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and complete the uh, the two other sides, the two, the uh, the front side and this back side, and in the far side on the back side of this uh, is the one that's going to be held on by the hinges. So we hope you'll stick with us and uh, looking forward to to seeing you all next week. I hope you got something out of this video today. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when our next YouTube video is coming out. And I hope that I inspired you so that you can inspire others because that's what learning is all about. Inspiring others to learn so others can help themselves. This is the Beat Harvest Man signing off for today.